Thank you to our Olympic team for a great relay. If you missed our intro, you can go back to the recording. It's a must. Team HSG consisted of our greatest athletes, which include the annual meeting planning committee members, our executive team, and the staff. The time and energy we, you, all spend seeking treatments that make a difference for those affected by HD may feel like you're running a marathon, but we see hope in the research and in the trials that are being conducted, and in the future, we will cross this finish line together. Hello, I'm Sherry Cannell, CEO of the Huntington Study Group, and I, together with Dr. Andy Fagan and Elise Kaysen, want to welcome you to HSG 2021. In a few minutes, we will share with you the state of our union. Andy's going to just say a quick hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Fagan, uh, chair of the HSG. Welcome to the 28th annual HSG meeting. We're so glad you're able to join us uh, today, and we look forward to being able to present to you uh, all of our incredible progress over the past year and past several years. Let me, it's my pleasure to introduce Elise Kaysen now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the HSG 2021. Uh, I'm happy to be here today, and I also look forward to seeing everyone next year in person. I am the co-chair of the HSG, and we have had an incredible year this year, and we're going to spend the next um, few minutes talking to you about our incredible success, and we couldn't have done this without all of you, our membership. So uh, we look forward to seeing you again next year, and um, sit back and enjoy the show. It's hard to believe it's been 20 months of Zooming, but hopefully our Entrado platform will be a good experience for you. So I have some housekeeping notes. The screens you see and the PowerPoints and videos are flexible. So move stuff around, increase the size to make your view better. And we have some incredible featured speakers I wanna quickly point out. Right after the State of the Union at 1045 Eastern time today, our keynote, Dr. Jean-Paul Van Zottel, will discuss his work at the New York Brain Bank, which he founded and directs at Columbia University. Dr. Banzato works to understand the cause of early death of neurons in HD using postmortem brains and organs from well-characterized HD patients. And speaking about the brain, Dr. Tim Kosick at 2.45 p.m. Eastern time today will share his work at the University of Iowa on postmortem brain imaging, particularly as it relates to juvenile onset HD. We're also excited to welcome our inspirational speaker, Alexander Drain, who will talk about the impact of caregiving on caregivers. I saw her speak. She is dynamic and passionate, not to be missed at 12.15 Eastern time today. Lots of great talks from HD Insights of the Year, Peter Como Symposium Platform Presentation, Innovators Forum, and the Clinical Trial Roundup. Aya Mato will talk about modifying HD with Alfie at 2 p.m. on Friday, Eastern Time. And I would like for you to stay after uh, many of these sessions for the Q&A because they will be live. All sessions are recorded and will be saved and available on demand for 12 months. And please do not miss our poster pavilion, pavilion hosting our 71 abstracts. And some presenters will also be available live for chats. You can also view and download the HSG 21 abstract publication from the Journal of Huntington's Disease by going to the resource tab. Don't forget to visit the networking lounge and you can post or chat um, uh, conversations with your buddies and also check out the trivia games. If you need help, ask for help at the, at, with the tab called help desk and we'll give you some tech support. And don't forget to do our feedback survey. It's critically important, but hopefully your feedback about this platform will not matter because we are praying that we're gonna be in person next year, East Coast, perhaps Boston. So stay tuned. So now our State of the Union address. Andy and Elise and I are gonna tag team this presentation. So be patient with our presentation relay. For an agenda, we're going to share HSG's incredible accomplishments, and we're going to roll out the new executive membership committee and talk about the elections. So our meeting highlights, uh, we have 500 plus registrants um, to this meeting, 21 countries represented. So let's see, we have people from 
Australia, Brazil, Cyprus, France, Germany, India, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Morocco, Netherlands, Norway, Pakistan, Russia, Spain, Switzerland, Russia, Thailand, United Kingdom. Wow, thank you all for joining us from around the globe. As I mentioned, 71 abstract posters and 26 exhibit booths. Please do not uh, miss those exhibit booths. Um, we have 15 sponsor booths and 11 com uh, community booths. Next slide, please. So we could not have done all of this without our wonderful, generous partners and sponsors. So we'll start with our gold sponsors. Thank you to Roche and Genentech. Next slide. Thank you so much to our silver sponsors, Neurocrine, Novartis, Sage, Therapeutics, Teva, and Unicure. And thank you to our bronze sponsors, Anexum Biosciences, CHDI, PTC Therapeutics, and Vasinex. And thank you to our friend sponsors, El Nylum, Mitocon, Prolenia, Spark, and Wave. Next slide, please. And we can't forget our wonderful meeting planners that spent all their time and energy to plan this wonderful day and plan our family day on Saturday. And we also want to thank our publications committee. So we have um, our plan annual meeting Planning Meeting Planning Committee is chaired by Lauren Seberger. Our Family Day Planning Committee is chaired by Martha Nance. And our Publications Committee, a special shout out who reviewed all of those 71 abstracts and made them available to you, um, led by Dr. Aaron Perstimey. Next slide, please. And nothing would have been done for this annual meeting without our incredible staff. We have Kristen Strasden's, Kevin Gregory and Emma Grushkin and a shout out to Emma for putting together our relay video. So thank you. And now we're gonna, Elise is gonna talk about our incredible timeline of success. Thank you, Sherry. In the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through HSG's incredible timeline of success. Between 1993 and 2021, HSG has conducted the most clinical trials and studies in HD. It all started in 1993 when Ira Olson and a number of other individuals who recognized with the identification of the gene, the need to initiate clinical trials for patients and families. By 1996, the HSG developed and validated the UHDRS now used as the primary outcome measure in all HD trials and is the primary outcome and cornerstone in clinical care. The landmark UHDRS publication and video can be found in a 1996 movement disorders issue. In 2008, based on the clinical trials conducted by the HSG, Tetrabenazine was the first drug approved by the FDA for the treatment of chorea in HD. In 2010, the HSG conducted a study called Project AWARE. This was to learn about HD families' awareness, willingness, and ability to participate in clinical studies. This study has been beneficial to how we design protocols, recruit subjects, and maintain uh, engagement with our study participants. In 2015, again, based on clinical trials conducted by the HSG, Dutetrabenazine became the second drug approved by the FDA for the treatment of chorea in HD. Between 2015 and 2019, the HSG initiated and conducted three large clinical trials. The first one, Signal, which, is a mono, which used a monoclonal antibody IV infusion, Connect HD using Valbenazine, and Connect HD2, which is an open label uh, study. And just wanted to put out a reminder to everybody that um, Connect HD2 is still currently recruiting. So please, if you have participants that might be interested in this study, please um, send them to a site closest to them 
and the sites are also located on our HSG website. We also embarked on a study called HD Care Improvement Project. And this was initiated to look at issues related to the needs and care of HD patients. We also implemented a study called HDNet. And HSG, in partnership with Genentech, created and distributed a healthcare provider survey. And this looked at characterizing the current healthcare practice for HD. Next slide. And just as a reminder, again, the HSG did conduct the only um, two trials that resulted in the only two FDA approved drugs for the treatment of HD, which we feel is a huge accomplishment. Next slide. In the midst of a pandemic, a hurricane, in a Texas winter storm, the HSG completed, um, the next slide, completed the signal study of over 300 participants and produced the top line results, restarted and completed Connect HD and implemented Connect HD2 and started a global phase three study of over 480 subjects called Proof HD. All of these studies um, reach their enrollment targets all ahead of schedule. Imagine that, totally amazing. And a huge thank you goes out to our HSG sites for your participation and dedication to finding new treatments for our patients and families. The HSG was also very busy updating our online CME for HD for care providers we also added new site investigator coordinator classes for conducting clinical trials through our HSG member ed. And Bonnie Hennig and her team re-energized and re-engineered the HSG credentialing process. If that wasn't enough, the HSG began the development of a new platform for HD patients and families called My HD Story an observational study for the voice of those affected by HD. You will hear more about this from Karen Anderson on Thursday, November 4th at 3.15. And the HSG initiated the development of virtual UHDRS. This is a study to look at the feasibility of conducting the UHDRS remotely. You will hear more from Sam Frank and Jody Goldstein on Friday, November 5th at 10.30 a.m. about this exciting new development for the HSG. In addition, the results from HDNet were published and presented at MDS. And last, by not least, we also started working on plans for the executive member committee and the new governance of the HSG. Wow. What an incredible journey the HSG has experienced. And we owe it all to you, our membership, who helped to make this all possible. Next, you will hear more detail about our growth and success. In addition, we grew our network. We, from uh, 1993 to now, we um, are up to 800, uh, HD experts and members. We grew to over uh, greater than 20,000 participants at our HSG sites. And the HSG now has 131 credential sites worldwide. Next slide. And this is a picture of where our sites are located. Next slide. To make sure that the HSG has the most qualified researchers, we have a dedicated and hardworking HSG credentials committee. Under the phenomenal leadership of Dr. Bonnie Henning, the committee has spent hours reviewing uh, each individual uh, person who applies for credentialing. The committee includes Andy Duker, Daniel Clausen, Julia Spears, Vicki Sagro, and it is supported by the incredible HSG staff 
Lauren Belenga, and Sharon Recor. Congratulations to all our newly credentialed investigators and coordinators. Also during 2020 and all of the challenges we faced, we built a CRO. And now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how our organization is structured. The Huntington Study Group is a not-for-profit organization whose mission is to seek treatments that make a difference for people affected by Huntington's disease. And through the Huntington Study Group, we provide programs like the annual meeting, family day, and all education programs and other scientific and research projects to address the needs of the HD community. You're gonna hear more about them in a minute. We also run clinical trials like the PROOF trial, which some of you may be participating as a site or as a participant. There are lots of operations that are needed to run trials. So we formed a for-profit wholly owned subsidiary called the HSG Clinical Research Inc. to run the operations of our clinical trials. Simply, uh, the HSG owns HSG Clinical Research Inc. And our financial model allows all the net profit of our clinical trials to get reinvested into the HSG so that we can develop and provide impactful programs for the HD community. So next slide. So now HSG has built in-house core functions. We have the ability to run clinical trials um, under the roof of the HSG. We have the scientific strategy, design, and clinical operations and infrastructure to run clinical trials. So just to see some of the highlighted core functions we have a whole team to help build protocols and study design. We have a global trial operations and oversight and management team. We have a very robust study startup team. We call it our tiger team to help um, get sites activated quickly and efficiently. We have incredible project and site management with collectively, I don't know, maybe close to 50 plus years of experience. We have a specialized recruitment and training um, staff. We have incredible community communication and outreach staff. Um, we provide site and risk-based monitor monitoring. We have built a very robust subject travel program for participants to be able to um, get to research sites. We obviously host trial meetings. We have a quality assurance team and vendor management to name a few. Next slide, please. So this is our team that um, is able to provide all the great programming of the HSG and to run our clinical trial operations. When I first started the HSG in 2009, um, we were two and a half staff and I was the half. So we have quintupled our staff and we are in facing incredible growth, excitement and opportunity. Next slide. Andy. Thanks, Shari. Um, and thanks to both of you, Shari and Elise, for your overview so far. Um, part of our, the biggest, from my perspective, one of the biggest parts of our recent success have been our recent clinical trials. And uh, I just want to briefly acknowledge that and talk a little bit about what has made our trials unique and, and how successful we have been. So um, as Elise mentioned, Proof HD was launched during a global uh, pandemic. It was really created uh, in terms of the protocol and design and contract signed. Everything about getting the trial off the ground occurred during a, a global pandemic. Um, this is a large global uh, phase three trial sponsored by Prolenia uh, that enrolled, actually was planned to enroll 480 patients, but actually exceeded that. Uh, enrolled 499 patients to be exact. Uh, and this was done over the course of one year during a global pandemic. So we're very proud to announce that uh, enrollment was completed last, last week. Um, the, uh, we also included COVID mitigation strategies, including virtual the possibility of virtual visits, which we fortunately have not had to use. I wanna acknowledge also uh, just how uh, great a relationship we've had with our sponsor, Prolenia, led by Michael Hayden, 
um, and and what a great team there is in general working with uh, a, a, a TFS, another um, a, um, a CRO with expertise in uh, regulatory issues in Europe uh, and with the CTCC. Um, we have also uh, had great success with our other active clinical trial, Connect HD and Connect HD, HD2, which Elise has talked about, and I have also developed a, an incredibly effective and um, uh, productive uh, relationship with neurocrine uh, biosciences. I should mention that uh, Dietrich Haubenberger will be telling you more in detail about Connect, the Connect HD trials on Friday. Uh, from 11.30 to 12. And I uh, just quickly going back to Proof HD, Dr. Uh, Michael Hayden will be telling you more about in detail about Proof HD on Friday from 11 to 11.30. Uh, the CONNECT trial also is unique in that it was the first trial to use wearable sensor for assessing uh, function in patients with, with HD. Uh, and as Elise mentioned, we're still recruiting for, the, for, for CONNECT HD too. I also want to just acknowledge some of our prior trials in which we also had developed these really wonderful relationships with sponsors and with the team, the team of vendors that we that we conducted these trials with, including Signal, which was sponsored by Vaccinex, um, that enrolled over 300 patients, again, uh, ahead of schedule. Um, and um, the, um, th that was the first trial that in in involved an IV infusion for patients with HD. And the other thing that made the signal trial unique uh, it was the, an adaptive design in which we started with a phase two trial and, and analyzed the data while phase, the, the next phase of the trial was starting using that, that data from the initial phase of the trial, cohort A, to redesign and um, change the uh, power and sample size needed for uh, the next phase of the trial, which converted to a phase three trial. Uh, and then we also have experience, prior experience with two other global trials, uh, First HD, Arc HD, and Horizon. Uh, and again, um, there were unique features of these trials, adaptive designs, um, and um, the first uh, opportunity to provide drug directly to participants in a trial. Um, so I just want to emphasize that the HSG really is proud of the relationships, the partnerships we deal, we develop with our with our sponsors. We're not just another vendor. We we uh, we it, it's it's personal for us, and um, and we also have um, access to you know the best. Uh, scientists and advisors, so we can come up with unique strategies for clinical trial design and conduct. And we're really proud of these most recent trials. So we can go to the next slide. We also have a research advisory council, which is chaired by Dr. Chris Ross. And this research advisory council provides thought leadership on scientific matters and advises on the design of trials, uh, helps to develop and review protocols, and can help to accelerate the development of HD treatments that will make a difference for patients and families. Um, we are able to call on the membership of the HSG um, to participate in these, in, in these research advisory council meetings with, with potential sponsors. And so we have a very wide range of backgrounds um, and who uh, for the most part, we maintain strong connections with academia, academia, industry foundations, and patient advocacy organizations and government. Next slide. So what I've already talked a bit about what I view as the HSG advantage uh, in doing clinical trials, but I think it's worth emphasizing and, and uh, expanding on that a little bit. Uh, we now have a CRO structure uh, with expanded operational capabilities. Um, and so we can kind of now have a little bit more control over how we do clinical trials, who the personnel are that are doing project management uh, and other roles in the clinical trials. Um, we have close long and longstanding relationships with a wide uh, network of HD credentialed investigators, coordinators, and sites. Uh, I think that this is really key. It's, it's these relationships that allow us to get contracts signed quickly, allow us to get IRB approvals happening quickly, and allow us to get sites activated and enrolling very quickly. Uh, we have in-house expertise in basic and clinical science. 
Uh, we have a proven history of successful trials with rapid recruitment, as I already talked about. We've our last three, actually our last many trials have recruited ahead of schedule, and um, we expect to be able to do that in the future as well, given that we were, were able to do this during a global pandemic, which was obviously challenging for everyone. Uh, we have uh, sites uh, exp have multiple experience now with multiple methods of drug delivery, including intrathecal uh, delivery. Of course, many of our sites have participated in um, some of those ASO trials, even though not directly through the HSG. And we have expertise in all phases of therapeutic development, including adaptive designs and registration trials. We can go to the next slide. One thing that really became uh, apparent to us during the pandemic is the need for the ability to do visits for trials virtually, and perhaps in the future to do to build in virtual visits as part of clinical trial designs to make participation easier for patients. Uh, and so in an effort to move this forward, uh, we have initiated a virtual UHDRS study. We're gonna be looking at in a rigorous way in a multi-center clinical trial, the technical requirements for doing effective UHDRS virtually, um, and also uh, assessing the reliability and reproducibility of, our, our, of the various items of the UHDRS um, when, conduct, when conducted virtually. This trial is being, uh, the PI is uh, Sam Frank, co-PI is Jody Goldstein. Uh, you'll be hearing more about this um, tomorrow at 10.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. Uh, in more detail, but this trial is moving along. We, we, we understand the urgency of having th this data, and we're in the process of site selection for this multi-center trial that is being uh, funded by the HSG. Next slide. We've also initiated a program uh, an online platform called My HD Story, and we've been working on this for quite a while, and we're hoping to launch uh, a, a beta version, a beta test version of this by the end of this calendar year. This project initially will be looking at uh, trying to develop and, and um, uh, better patient reported outcome measures for Huntington's disease. But in the long run, I think this will serve as a platform to, for doing clinical, all kinds of clinical research online. Uh, we're extremely enthusiastic about this project. This is being led by uh, Dr. Karen Anderson, who will be telling you more about it uh, if you join her um, to later today at 3.15 today, 3.15 to 3.30 today. And we have a short video. Thank you, Andy. And in addition to all of the information you've heard about our clinical trials, we also have a number of um, committees and programs for education, training, and care. The CME for HD is led by Mary Edmondson. CME for HD is an accredited learning program for healthcare professionals and care providers caring for individuals and families impacted by HD. You can find this program on the HSG website. HSG Ed is led by Jody Goldstein and Sam Frank. And this is an education program for our investigators and coordinators. And this is dedicated to the nuts and bolts of conducting clinical trials. This program is in place to make sure our sites are trial ready when sponsors come and talk to us about a new study. We also have HD Insights, which is led by Daniel Clausen. This is a periodical which highlights the latest in HD research and also talks about the people who make HD research happen. We also have engaged in HDNet, which is led by Jody Corey Bloom and Lauren Seberger. HSG, in partnership with Genentech, created and distributed a healthcare provider survey and this uh, turned out to characterize the current healthcare practices for HD. We have also just recently started HD Navigate, and this is being led by Lauren Seberger. Again, in partnership with Genentech, this pilot study is looking at a hub and spoke model 
for the care of HD patients and families. The purpose is to connect HD experts with private practices to improve care for HD patients. This study is being modeled after the project ECHO. So now we're going to turn to some changes we've made in the governance structure of the HSG. Much of this has been driven by the laws and rules by from the IRS and from the New York State from New York State regarding um, governance uh, of non for profits. Our goal was to maintain the leadership role of the co chairs of the HSG with the understanding that the co chairs because of these local and and federal rules really can't we can really can't have elected uh, chairs and co-chairs of a board of a non-for-profit for multiple reasons. Um, so um, well, we're going to talk about what we've come up with as a way, as a solution to this uh, to this situation. So we can go to the next slide. First of all, this is our current leadership uh, of the HSG. And um, I just want to thank the members of the board uh, for all of their hard work over the past several years and the members of the executive executive committee as well. In fact, the executive committee you'll be hearing in a moment has taken on a new role, a new important role uh, in the uh, uh, nominations and election process. Um, and so we'll be talking about that as well. But thank a big thank you to all of these members of the board and the executive committee. Next slide. So, we're trying, we, we, as I mentioned, we need to make some changes in, in, the, in how we do, uh, how we, in, in, the, in really, it's really a, a change in the, in the titles of the co-chairs, not so much in what their functions are. Uh, but to do this, we created a new executive membership committee, which will drive the str strategic direction of the HSG. And we're hoping that this executive membership committee will engage more membership in becoming involved in HSG programs, committees, research, and leadership. Uh, we see this as an opportunity for in increasing the uh, membership participation in the, in the HSG. Uh, and then, of course, we also need to start the process for the HSG chair elections. Uh, next slide. So the executive membership committee will be led by the new, newly elected co-chairs um, and will provide leadership to fulfill the HSG's mission. Uh, the the EMC or executive membership committee will oversee and participate in HSG research, education, and care programs, will identify new HG pro, HSG programs, projects, and funding sources, and will lead the development and impl implementation of strategic initiatives for HSG Limited, addressing the needs of key shareholders, including membership, sponsors, and the HD community. In many ways, the, the co new co-chairs and their committee, the uh, executive membership committee, will continue to function uh, the way uh, the chairs have always functioned, setting strategic uh, plans um, and uh, initiatives and, um, and being involved in, in all aspects of leadership of the HSG. Next slide. This will be the structure. Uh, there is an, uh, an HSG limited board of directors, uh, and there will be committees of the board, which are committees made up of members of the HSG board, and this includes the audit committee and the governance committee. But then there will be this new committee called the Executive Membership Committee that will be chaired by the elected co-chairs and will consist of, uh, of, of multiple subcommittees as well. The chair and co-chairs will select um, the membership of this exec Executive Membership Committee. Um, and there, uh, I think it's also important to point out, uh, oh, and it's also important to point out that the co-chairs of the Executive Membership Committee will be member, voting members of the Board of Directors. They just won't be the chair and co-chair of, of the Board of Directors. The, we, we talked briefly earlier about the Research Advisory Council. This, is, this group we, we envision uh, bridging the HSG, the non-for-profit of the HSG, with the for-profit HSG Clinical Research or HSG CR, and this is the the council that advises and um, and um, helps with drug development plans, protocol development plans, scientific direction uh, with potential sponsors. And this is chaired by uh, Dr. Chris Ross, and will will be co-chaired by one of the chair newly elected chairs, 
Uh, and um, membership on the executive committee will also be able to participate in the research advisory council. Next slide. So let's talk about the election next steps. Next slide. Uh, we will uh, be entertaining um, for nomination in the election process, either two HSG credentialed investigators or one investigator and one credentialed and coordinate, coordinator. And we will um, permit the nominee of at least one, of, of one person in each pair from outside of New York, uh, North America. We don't want both um, members. We just think for practical reasons, it would be difficult to have both co-chairs outside the, the, of North America. Uh, but we would encourage um, a, a combination of co-chairs that would include one individual outside of North America. The new co-chairs that are elected will take their, take their position on July 1st of next year. Uh, and their key roles and responsibilities will include serving as voting members on the HSG board, as I mentioned. Uh, one co-chair will co-direct the Research Advisory Council, uh, and their jobs will be to set strategic in initiatives uh, and projects for the Huntington Study Group, very much like what Elise and I have done for the past three and a half years. Next slide. We have a new nominating committee, which is cha chaired by Joel Perlmutter and is um, made up by, uh, by our current members of the executive committee. And I just want to acknowledge who, who they are here and thank them for their service. Um, and they will be vetting the, 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 the people that are not, um, that suggestions for tickets that come in and uh, will be nominating people for these new chair co-chair roles. Next slide. So here's a, a proposed timeline. We felt that we today we really didn't have time to go into some details. I'm sure some of what I've talked about will uh, engender some questions. And so we want to give the HSG membership uh, an opportunity to hear in more detail what we're planning uh, and to ask questions. And so we're planning to have town hall meetings, multiple town hall meetings probably sometime either end of November, beginning of December, uh, to give all of you an opportunity to weigh in on our plans and to hear in more detail what our plans are um, and for us to re receive feedback. Between December and February, we'll be accepting nominations, uh, which will be solicited by, solicited by an electronic survey. Between February and March, uh, we'll be having um, meet the candidate um, um, video conferences. So we'll be much like what Elise and I did when we ran for uh, chair, chair and co-chair back in 2017 to 18. Um, and then in March, the election process will begin by electronic ballot. The, the election will end in April. The new chairs uh, will be selected and join the existing board uh, meetings for overlap starting in May or June, and then they will assume their positions in, on July 1st. Next slide. So just a reminder of what I just said, we'll be planning HSG member town hall meetings uh, for end of November into December. We're gonna do several of these so people have an opportunity to participate and get to hear in more detail about uh, the uh, new, re this restructuring and new governance uh, uh, um, roles uh, for the HSG. Um, and we'll, you'll be hearing, you know, keep tuned because we'll, you'll be hearing more about this. Next slide. So thank you so much for your attention and for your time. Um, I hope you'll agree that we've, it's been a very productive year and a very productive past three or four years. Um, we're, we thank you for joining us today. I just wanna say personally, it's just been a privilege for me to serve as chair of the HSG for the past three and a half years. And uh, it's been a very gratifying experience. I, I think the HSG is just, really just be beginning our growth and beginning a, I think we have a great future, uh, both in uh, developing our relationships uh, with the HDE patients and community, but also in developing treatments that will make a difference for patients and families uh, in the future. I wanna thank my co-chair, Elise Kaysen, for her, all her tireless efforts on behalf of the HSG. 
uh, thank Sherry Cannell for her incredible leadership of the HSG over these past three or four years. And thank all of you for your participation and enthusiastic um, um, uh, acceptance of, of the HSG. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank have, you. A, have a great HSG 2021.